this is an interesting one because what we know now is that Brendan has finally been to the comedy mothership. That green room's great at the mothership, Joe. Oof, it's fun, the whole right? club Black. is gorgeous. There's nothing. It's so. You just you just spot. took everything that was great at the comedy store, and then we're like, I'm gonna move here. <laughs> yeah, make it a little better. Yeah. Dude, the, this the, is gonna the be main, your fine. main room is just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, we did everything the right way. You know, we set it up the right way. It took a long ass time, and you know that that just being in that green room with, room with Schultz and everybody, and we were that, all talking that, shit. It was, I was so like, oh, good man. to be fun. together. Oh, like man. I, it's so I fun miss laughing. That. I fucking miss that. Yeah, we that, don't get that. now. Well, that's a problem. Like we had that at the store. Yeah, we did. Where it was like a fun hang, where you would go, you know, you do your weekends on the road or whatever. But when you were in town on the weekdays, you get to hang out with your boys. Oh, we would better. laugh and nothing talk shit, like hug it. each other. Laughing. So fun, so fun. God. And we got a lot of like really good up and coming people, like the, the in open micers. Yeah, I would like to hear from the comedians that weren't in that in group because they talk about how fun it is and how cool it was to hang out and joke around and make the comedy store in LA their own little hangout spot. But I wonder how it was like for the people who were on the fringes, because from what I've seen, you know, Chappelle Lacey recently got made a regular event at the comedy store. So clearly it's continued keeping on. And I heard something about whoever's a new booker there doesn't like rapists and diddlers and shit, which is why he hasn't got Callan and fucking um, Chris Lear back there. But clearly the comedy store is still doing its thing. They're still having bookings. They're still selling out weekend shows. People are performing. People are going to see comedians there. So the comedy store has kept on keeping on. It's just that this little crew of this little boys club, for lack of a better term, isn't there anymore. Rogan's moved to Austin. Other people have followed him there. And the scene has changed around the comedy store. They may be trying to get some younger people, fresher people, different people from different places, blah, blah, blah. But that's all that's changed they don't have their boys clubs anymore and they're really annoyed by it they had a complete chokehold on that club for like more than two decades it felt like maybe even more yet they're still not willing to give up space and room for the new people to come in and they just wanted to be like the old times forever and ever and ever and ever which is interesting because they just replicated the same thing when they went to austin but it's kind of a bit it's been a bit different so i would love to hear from the comedians who weren't in that inner circle was it really as good as they said it is? Because they always say, oh, the comedy store is so good right now. The comedy store has been the greatest right now. Now they never speak about it. You never hear these guys wanking over the comedy store anymore, right? You never hear them fucking, you know, fucking orgasming over the fucking comedy store while they're on the fucking stand up on their podcast. They don't talk about it anymore. The comedy store doesn't exist because Rogan doesn't exist. Isn't that funny? This place that you said was the best, was the awesome, was the home of comedy. Mitzi Shaw this, Mitzi Shaw that. Now they never speak about the comedy store anymore, only because one guy left. One guy left, and now the comedy store doesn't exist. <laughs> you know? So I wonder, was the comedy store actually always good? Or was it only good because they had a chokehold on it, and it was basically their own club? Essentially, the comedy store, think about it, was Joe Rogan's club. Because I associate the comedy store with Rogan because you spoke about it so much. So it was kind of like his club without being his club. And then when he set up the comedy mothership, he basically took Adam Eager from there, who was the booker, and took him over there. And everyone, you know, in maybe his contact list and people that were living, or that were regulars at the comedy store, all moved to Austin to go and perform there also. So I'm not really sold on this. Oh, it was amazing thing. It was amazing for you guys because you got to always perform there. You had all your friends there. You had a fucking dominion over there. But I wonder for the guys and girls who were trying to get in, who weren't cool, who didn't share your political opinion, who didn't fucking like cars, who didn't like jujitsu, who didn't care about trainers, who didn't care about knives and barbecues, right? Who didn't think Trump was funny. I wonder if those guys liked the comedy store. I bet they didn't. <laughs> They're great, bro. Yeah. The comics out here, man, big shout out to them. I, I saw some of these young guys. Because they're great each writers. Other well, if you build it, they I come. I miss that. If you yeah. build it, they come. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You should build it. They come. Um, if you build it, they come. They come a lot. Yeah, you, Uche is right. I think the fallout from the truck walk fiasco made Joe want to distance himself from Brendan. I think the fallout from that, and also because I think Joe is really insulated in a way. I do think he's one of those kind of guys that I would believe he doesn't really comment and he kind of has a head in the sand. And I think he only realized the extent of how his friends use his name when that whole truck walk thing went down. And the whole Kalila thing and the Bobby Lee thing with Brendan and Brian basically bullying him on the phone, telling him, oh, we're going to tell Rogan about you. I think that's when Joe realized, oh, shit, these guys are these guys are doing the most. 
that's when he realized i don't think he actually knew before that he realized then he was like okay cool i don't want that i think he was kind of oblivious to it a little bit um purposefully so maybe to kind of not kind of be wrapped into it but the moment he was made aware it's no coincidence that he just ran away <laughs> and he hasn't turned back ever since do you know what i mean and he also according to bobby lee i think he made it clear to him that he wasn't involved he called him he tried to reassure him look i didn't have nothing to do with these these guys were just acting on their own i'd never do this you know i love you blah blah blah, blah. so clearly that was a maybe the final straw it's like you know what enough is enough these guys have you know sucked all my clout out i need to go somewhere else and get restored and yeah and he's got restored he's been replenished with these clout fluids you know come and well, joe so built so many it, so people have there. moved here just yeah, specifically exactly. because we they know we have this two night open mic program and we also have door people at the store They're or at the, uh, the the mothership. mothership rather that all are comics yeah so they auditioned in front of adam to become a door person like with the their store. act yeah so they had to have like promise as a comic. So the whole idea is like to have like a mentorship program and have a program where, you know, you can be a guy who's working the door and you know, you've been doing open mics for a year and next thing you're hanging out at the bar with Andrew Schultz yep. and we're all palling around together. And there's this this vibe there. There's this sort of camaraderie that exists that makes you feel like you're a part of something. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you're just starting and this person just headlined Madison Square Garden. It doesn't matter. We're all just comedians. And that's yeah. all you, brother. That's your thing. The same thing you did in L.A. And the, the, you left and it's fucking... Well, it's everyone should try to... Why don't you try and do it again? I don't understand this. Like, That's why I said, again, I think this goes back to my theory that as annoying as Rogan is... We have to be thankful for him because if this guy didn't exist i think these guys will be far worse than what they are everyone that you dislike everyone that you think is a bit of a douche is a bit of a scumbag is a little bit annoying i think they'd be way worse if rogan wasn't around he keeps him in check he's kind of chill compared comparative to how rich and successful he is and this approach that he had in the beginning of inviting all these comics on these podcasts, of being welcoming to new people, of putting them on the shows, of helping them out to get sponsors and ads and shit, that was something none of them did before. Rogan did it, you know? So because of Rogan, they are all more well behaved. But something that doesn't make sense to me is a comedy thing because with the comedy store, they spoke about how Rogan made that place great by making everyone chill, making everyone friends and shit. If Rogan steps away and he's not there, surely one of these guys should step up and be the de facto leader, right? Be the kind of cool, the go-to person. But they didn't do it. Why? Because they're not invited. They've not, well, like no one wants them in there anymore because clearly it shows that Rogan was the one everyone liked. So that's what I'm, I'm starting to believe a little bit. Rogan was the one that everybody liked and respected because obviously of his celebrity, his notoriety, his success, and obviously how long he's been doing comedy for, right? But actually, the people around him, the comedy store people only tolerated them because Rogan was there. And then the moment Rogan stepped away, the ones who were liked have still still performed at the comedy store. The ones who weren't liked haven't performed there since. So maybe that's what happened. Maybe Rogan was actually the reason why those guys were accepted and welcomed to that space in that community. And the moment he left, they were like, nah, you can stay there. We don't, we've never liked you adopt that because we need more comics and it's hard it's hard to do it's hard and it's hard to do when you you feel like you're getting shit on by your peers like you want support it's so hard bro you want it support. is so hard yeah it's hard and i don't feel like <laughs> listen there, there's a lot of funny people in la they're they're great man i you know there's people like there's not funny the crowds are just weird and it's not the club's fault they can't no. like make people magically change out what they find well funny. you bring a good crowd can you imagine Sam Tripoli complaining about the crowds in LA? Now imagine, close your eyes and imagine what Sam Tripoli's jokes will sound like on a stage. You hear what he speaks about. You know what he rants about. You know what he's passionate about. Now imagine what a Sam Tripoli comedy set would sound like. Do you think anywhere in the world would laugh at that stuff? Do you think anywhere in the world would be laughing at him talking about, you know, the fur tower? <laughs> <laughs> about flat earth on the stage and screaming at you and trying to make it funny you think anyone will like that but here he is blaming the la crowds it's the la crowds that don't get they don't like me man it's like bro maybe change up your comedy a little bit because i think with sam trip he's actually funnier on pods he's like he's a, he's another example of the lewis lewis j gomez thing he's way funnier on podcasts than he is on stage i've seen some of his comedy and it's like that that's the kind of comedy that make me walk out like do you know what I mean? He's screaming at you about something. 
he's all vitamined up, you know what I mean? He's concentrated hard at Rogan there, right? He's giving him that concentrating look face, which is worse because it looks like he's got really thick glasses, so it makes his eyes look bigger. So it's really staring at you. Yeah, so he probably is okay, but the glasses and the fucking non-blinking <laughs> and the clenched jaw doesn't really help situations here. Um, I can't imagine going on Rogan high, to be fair. <laughs> I can't ever imagine it. I would even be afraid to take a joint to like, you know, to, to take a pull on the joint. Oh, Uche saying it's just a meth face. <laughs> no, nah, Uche, he's just concentrating. <laughs> it's not meth, he's concentrating. It's oh these guys are late let's continue to a place with good do you remember the shows you used to do i'd yeah. walk into the green room it'd be rogan bill burr segura. sebastian mascalco david the, tell the david joey tell, diaz, joey diaz. Uh, J J tom segura theo it'd, it'd be the biggest comics ever and they'd, it'd be the lineup and i'd be like this is the lineup I'm i in. will yeah. miss that. i guess this happens a lot when you're older you just start reminiscing right but it's just so odd it's just a bit yucky like they're all trying to suck him off it seems like they're trying to plead with Rogan to come back to LA. Help us, please. It's never been the same without you. Like, bro, grow up. It's over, man. You had a good run. And most of you guys, the reason why it's not the same is because you have allegations against you, mate. No one really wants to be associated with a Callan. No one really wants to be associated with a Brendan or with a Chris. That's probably why. And maybe even Sam Tripoli because of the situation he's been going through. It's not, that's why it's not the same. And maybe Rogan's protection is not there anymore, but it's like, you had a good run. You had a really good run. Just adapt to the new climate that's existing there. Just just harp on the, the new old stuff. I bet you. I wonder. I wonder. If there's a part like. I wonder. If there's a part of Joe that is a little bit before he was. He was encouraging everyone to move to, to Austin with him. I wonder if now he's a bit like, oh man, why are they all moving here? I wonder if it's a bit of Joe that's like, fuck, they all they all fucking moving here as well, because he probably likes a fresh start. Because it's a, different, it's a different type of person in Austin, right? Even the ones that move in there. It's a different way of life. Um, it's a different type of person. Different attitudes, right? Joe's got a new form. I think he's got a new appreciation for, for comedy now. He's got higher standards. Even That's why he's not inviting Brendan there. I wonder if there's a part of him that's sort of regret, regretting like, in telling him to all come. Because they're all kind of pining to be a part of that, you know, comedy store 2.0 scene that's existing in Austin. When it feels like Joe doesn't want to... Like, it feels like Joe didn't want to repeat what happened at the comedy store. I think even he knew it was getting toxic. So he went to the comedy store and started afresh because there's loads of new guys there. Loads of guys that probably would have never got an opportunity at the comedy store that have got opportunities at the fucking mothership. He changed his whole approach. He's got new people there. He doesn't even manage it. Adam Eager does more so. He kind of pops in, but he's not really the boss boss, right? He kind of leaves it into the hands of somebody else. So it's a bit of distance. So no, no one's ever coming to him all the time. So I wonder if there's a part of me that's like... Why are these guys following me, man? Like, fuck. Why can't you just, like, you know, like, because, oh, I remember now. Do you guys remember when Brendan said one time on a podcast um, that Joe told him to, uh, what did he say? What was, the, what was the phrase? To stay here and hold it down. I wonder if Rogan did it as, like, a kidology. He told him, like, to, like, encourage him. Yeah, stay here and hold it down. When actually he was making sure he didn't follow him to fucking Austin. <laughs> sorry i fucking <laughs> burped there and sneezed at the same time i wonder if that's happening if that's what's happened he told brendan hold it down stay here in la step up and fill in my fill, fill fill my slot be the leader in the hopes that he would feel gassed and stay and not follow him to austin but now they're all gonna follow him because i feel like eventually brendan's gonna move there he's already bought the truck he talks about it all the time I think that I think they're gonna move to Austin eventually. I think Brendan's gonna move there. Brian obviously has an excuse to move there because he's got the job with Stephen Crowder, and I think Crowder lives in Austin also, if I'm not mistaken. But I've got a feeling Brendan's gonna move to Austin. That's my theory. I don't know how he's gonna, how he's gonna convince his wife because his wife is very LA centric. Um, she loves all the fancy shit. She's a bit of a I, I'm assuming a fan of the Kardashians, right? I can't imagine Kim living in Austin. Kim hated Wyoming, right? I don't actually oh, Wyoming is not the same as Austin, but I don't think. You know, a person like Brendan Schwab's wife really wants to live anywhere else apart from LA. You know what I mean? You love that scene. You love what it's about, what it represents. And from what I've heard on podcasts from other people, Austin's great, but it's not LA. It's a very different way of life. So 
Brennan will have a hard job on his hands trying to convince his wife to move there. But I've got a feeling sooner rather than later, you're going to see Brendan in fucking Austin. You're going to see him wearing his soy boy hat. You're going to see him driving his truck. You're going to see him playing fucking Zach Bryan on his, in, his, in his car stereo, pretending to know the words as he's driving down the street and shit, right? Like, you're going to see all that stuff. I'm, I've got a feeling he's definitely, definitely going to do that. Um, the Austin thing's happening. There's too much sucking off of, of fucking Rogan and the scene there back in the day and stuff. But like I said, I think the whole, you know, revisionist history and oh my God, comedy store is so good. I think it's only good if you were in the in crew, if you were in the in click. I think if you're on the outside of it, you probably hated it. I'm sure there were people in that scene that probably hated all those guys, thought they were fucking annoying. They took up all the spots. Um, they're not even that funny, all this sort of stuff. And now that they've gone, the scene's completely changed. I'm actually, let me just check the comedy store, the comedy store fucking Instagram, because I bet you the comedians out there are completely different to the ones that we saw previously. Oh, it's a comedy store UK. I didn't know that. Okay, cool. Brendan said that he moved to Texas but not Austin. I can see him pulling some blame, some lame move nearby. Oh, what's that? Um, Oh shit, why do I know this? Isn't there a place in Aust in Texas that's named after the song? Um I'm on the way to Amarillo? Is this the way to Amarillo? Is it Amarillo? Is is there a place in Texas called Amarillo? It's it's in a cartoon, isn't it? Amarillo. Why do I remember that for me? I think it's Texas. It's a cartoon, it's an old Disney cartoon, and the characters sing in the song about Amarillo. Is Amarillo in Texas? Let's sing that little old song by the same name. Just follow the bouncing ball. The stars at night are big and bright. Deep in the heart of Texas. See, Amarillo is Amarillo, isn't it? I want to go to a place in Amarillo. Da -da 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 -da. Is this the way to Amarillo? Yeah. Oh, my God. My memory. Wow. I don't know where I plucked that from. Look at the comedy store. Look how different it is. All right, who you got here? You got, um, I forgot her name. Fortune Femister, I think. I don't know who that guy is. Santina, Sam Tripoli. I don't know who these guys are. I know that guy's gay. He always talks about how he's gay and shit. That's his thing. Um, the, uh, the black guy that Joe likes, um, Ian Edwards, I think. There are a lot of people I don't, I don't recognize, see? Many people I don't recognize here, actually. Look, look at this. There's a show called Riff Raff featuring Eddie Pipitone. Do you know who that is? Don't know. Steve Fury. Madison Sinclair, Jason Ellis, Frank Castillo, and Steph Tolvev. I bet you all these people didn't perform in Rogan and Software Around. So I bet you all these guys are probably happy they left because it gives them space to perform. Even these guys here. Tony Baker, Ian Bagg. Oh, Adam Conover. That's the guy that did that podcast with Rogan that Rogan hated, isn't it, right? He's definitely not going to be invited in the comedy mothership. Um, Ryan Sickler, Stephen Fury. I know like three of these guys in here. So it's completely changed. <laughs> Eddie died. Eddie days. No, you're thinking of uh, of an armadillo. 